Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all having a great day, and that you are all doing well to start things off. Japan's financial services giant Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, or MUFG, and Bradesco, one of Brazil's largest banks, have teamed up to launch a blockchain-driven cross-border payment system. The product will use the distributed ledger technology of US startup company known as Ripple, the body that now has the uh, second largest cryptocurrency known as XRP. This was said by MUFG in a statement on Friday. The two financial institutions signed a memorandum of understanding or an MOU with the goal to widen their market presence by offering blockchain-based facilitation of international transactions. The project eyes business settlement between Japan and Brazil. MUFG will participate through its main Japanese bank, MUFG Bank, and its Brazil subsidiary, Banco MUFG Brazil, a bank that targets mainly corporate clients, especially in the metal, mining, oil, gas, and food industries. MUFG is a former shareholder of Bradesco and has a cooperation agreement with the bank. They said, through this MOU, MUFG Bank has decided to start the collaboration between development for cross-border payments between Japan and Brazil, utilizing Ripple's cutting-edge technology. This was said during their press release. The new payment system developed by Ripple, a San Francisco-based software vendor, will assist the bank as the work toward commercializing a high-speed, transparent, and traceable cross-border payment solution between Japan and Brazil, end quote. And on top of this as well, just to merge them both together without separating them. We also have this news as well. The CIMB Group, which is headquartered in Kuala Lumpur and one of the largest banks in the Association of Asian Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, has partnered with Ripple to enhance instant cross-border payments across CIMB's markets. The partnership involves CIMB joining RippleNet that consists of over 100 global banks and financial institutions. On the other hand, CIMB Group has a wide retail network of over 1,000 branches in the, I'm not sure if that's Asian or ASEAN, I, I would say Asian, it looks like it should be Asian, Asian region, that is the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. The group operators or operates under several entities which include CIMB Bank, CIMB International Bank, Investment Bank, CIMB Islamic, CIMB Niaga, CIMB Securities International, and CIMB Thai CIMB is one of the region's first banks to embrace blockchain technology and a bid to increase the speed and efficiency of cross-border transactions in a region where such transactions have been traditionally slow, with the World Bank estimating the value of annual remittances to Southeast Asia to exceed $120 million. CIMB's group partnership with Ripple comes at an opportune time. Uh, no really need to read any more. Uh, uh, so we had news a couple of months ago from Brad Garlinghouse that we wouldn't receive information about any new partnerships until the Ripple company had passed, uh, I think, 200 banking partnerships or something like that. So now uh, the last couple of weeks, for those who have not noticed, we've had an absolute avalanche of nonstop good news uh, for Ripple slash XRP. Uh, it's been a, a little insane, and I think that now the prices are starting to uh, mimic exactly what's going on. At least this is my hope for the near future. But it's very nice to hear that all these partnerships are finally starting to come out. Uh, during the last, not even 10 months, so let's say the last nine months, we had a very large problem where no one at all was releasing any type of news about their cryptocurrency projects or what was happening or who was being a new partner, simply because the prices were going down. And then when prices are going down, if you release any type of good news and prices continue to go down, that news is then lost in the stratosphere for the rest of forever. Uh, but I think everyone is starting, at least the way that it seems to me, is starting to try and uh, release their news as they see that the market is in a bit of a recovery phase or what analysts are saying could have or is now potentially the bottom of where prices are going to go. But yeah, I thought I'd merge those two together without having to separate them because they seem relatively similar in that they are um, forming multiple partnerships with uh, different uh, countries and banks and entities that traditionally have not had an enormous amount of liquidity so this is why it's very important that they're merging all of these things together especially when it comes to uh things in the um like the asian like the southeast asian area they've, they've had a very difficult time especially when it comes with like swift and stuff like that and being able to uh source liquidity for sending money back and forth yeah let's move on next up the Hong Kong-based crypto and blockchain startup of Crypto.com announced that it was planning on expanding its prepaid Visa cards to the United States. The MCO Visa cards are currently only available to residents of Singapore, but this is about to change as the Metropolitan Commercial Bank will be rolling out the card service in the United States. 
The prepaid MCO Visa cards are high-end metal cards with no annual or monthly fees. There is also no fee for ATM withdrawals with select cards having airport lounge access. The cards also have a tap and pay functionality and also no foreign transaction fees. They say residents of the United States who wish to get the card can make reservations using the Crypto.com wallet and the card app. The process is estimated to take less than three minutes and includes ID verification. Uh, not going to really read anymore. First of all, this is not paid advertisement for those who are wondering. I don't do that on this channel. Um, uh, we've just seen, I want to say it has to be the last two months, not even really much longer than that. Uh, where a lot of companies are finally starting to come out and they're announcing that they have some type of a visa debit credit something of a card that you can use that you can have your cryptocurrencies on and therefore you can use your crypto as like an everyday payment method uh i think it's kind of interesting that towards it was around march april may somewhere within that time frame where the litecoin foundation was trying to get their own debit card and for some reason they were denied. I forgot the exact, uh, not ex excuse, but the reason why they said that they weren't able to actually have their card launched. And I think it's a little weird that a couple months later, this is like the ninth card that has been launched as a, a prepaid card that is filled, if you will, quote unquote, with your cryptocurrencies. I don't know. It's, it's a bit odd. I wonder if we will receive some type of a confirmation press release, something from the Litecoin Foundation or from Charlie Lee that they're still trying to do this because the way that it seemed before when they were talking about it was that it was... Uh, kind of put on the back burner they'd really not that they weren't interested in doing it anymore but i think if i feel like this this isn't meant to be like a litecoin thing but i feel like litecoin could be so much further if they did certain i mean i'm not i'm not in the litecoin foundation so i can't exactly say what they are planning on doing uh but it seems a little weird that litecoin tried to do this, do this at the beginning of the year i think they said that they couldn't not find funding but they couldn't uh, latch on to a, a, a particular bank in order to be able to do this and now we have an enormous amount of other cards who are also launching. This one is from Singapore, and apparently it'll be available to people in the United States, I guess, effective immediately, and maybe in the next couple of weeks, months. I don't know exactly the, the time frame for this. Uh, I'm, I'm still a bit, I don't want to say torn. Uh, I, can, I assume that this will eventually catch on. Uh, there's been such an enormous amount of coins that have been popping up that I think people will eventually start using their cryptocurrencies as... A payment method, I, I give it like five to 10 years for like mainstream use. But I think a lot of people who are in the crypto space right now uh, probably not planning on selling their cryptocurrencies. But it's nice to at least have the option. And it's nice to know that uh, we don't have to do that thing where we open up our phone, ask the person who we're paying to show us their QR code, and then we scan the QR code, and then we have to enter the exact amount. It, it, you know, It's just a lot easier when you can just swipe or tap a card. But yeah, this is uh, another card that has launched and... I wonder if other crypto institutions, n not funds, like people making the crypto and stuff like that, the the projects will eventually release their own coins because I think Litecoin could definitely benefit from something like this, at least in the short term, meaning like next 18 months. All righty, let's move on. So I'm going to read a tiny bit of this and then I'll give you what I'm thinking. It says the recent crackdown on two ICOs, Paragon and Air Fox by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC could lead to many blockchain and crypto projects declaring bankruptcy in the coming months. As CCN reported on the 16th of November, Paragon and Air Fox were ordered to pay a $350,000 fine to the U.S. SEC and refund investors who participated in the token sale. The problem for the two tokens is that they have been asked by the U.S. SEC to refund $12 million and $15 million, respectively, to investors. And since their ICOs, the prices of cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, have declined substantially. And blockchain projects have used most of their funds garnered in the token sales to fund operations. They said both companies have agreed to return funds to harmed investors, register the tokens as securities, file periodic reports with the commission, and pay penalties, as was said by someone on the SEC. A more serious issue for, SC for ICOs is that the SEC reaffirmed in its document, investors in ICOs considered securities under the existing guidance of the SEC have the right to sue projects to be compensated for their losses. So we have a lot of things uh, that are a problem right here. And I'm going to start off with the basis that I said about six months ago. I said I had a, a really strong inkling, uh, or rather, I have always felt that the U.S., as the U.S. controls a large amount of the monetar monetary policies around the world, if they had taken the initiative to 
put the right foot forward, the correct foot forward, and make sure that they embraced ICOs or that they uh, were a bit more lenient to the original ICOs or pretty much comes down to that uh, America, if they wanted to, could control the entire cryptocurrency space uh, just by being friendly to it. And what we have now is a situation where uh, not only the, the, the idea, first of all, we had something from the SEC before about two weeks ago where they said that they're trying to penalize uh, people who are writing code. And if someone uses your code that you have written maliciously, uh, therefore, the person who wrote the code can then uh, be fined and penalized and potentially even thrown in jail. That's very dangerous in that. Uh, imagine if you wrote a code for your child that said, you know, uh, you can draw, you know, funny cartoon characters of people on TV and stuff like that. And what if somebody made a cartoon of like from the, you know, from the code that you wrote for your child of them showing them harming someone who's in politics or so someone who's on, you know, mainstream television. And then someone else watched that cartoon and said, you know, that that was on YouTube or something like that and decided to then do harm to the people who they saw in the cartoon. It, 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 it's kind of a dangerous road when you say that someone writing code uh, can be, held uh, liable for something that someone else does and to say that so if you are in an ico you then have the right to sue projects to be compensated for their it's 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 kind of completely out of control especially when in the in the first place that the sec believes that anything that has been an ico is a security and therefore it falls under their right and we now have a situation where cryptocurrencies which are bitcoin is like nine and a half ten years old other cryptocurrencies are maybe three, four, two, one years old, uh, where they're falling under the rules of something that's around 70 years old. And we now have situations where these these projects that are supposed to be decentralized, uh, I've, I've said before, if you, if you make a project, at some point it is going to be quote unquote centralized. It has to have a face. It has to have someone who is actually making it they sit in an office somewhere they write on their computer therefore it has to be centralized at that moment uh, but the sec is actively going hunting for these people trying to i don't know if it's uh i can't even say what it could potentially be what is actually happening uh i think it's them i think it's the sec flexing their muscles trying to show other people that they can do this and that they are going to do this and that they are willing to hunt down cryptocurrency projects and decentralized exchanges to show that no one is out of the reach of the long arm of the law but this is going to present a number of issues uh for cryptocurrency in the short term in the long term the tables are going to be flipped i was listening to i'm not sure if it was andreas antonopoulos a couple days ago i i i think it was i'm pretty sure it was him on a podcast and he was stating um and it's something that i i you know you you have in your head but you don't really think of it as like an option and he said he was actually uh, pretty happy that ether delta got uh found or was fined by the sec he said because what what the what the sec did or what they're doing right now when they're when they're hunting after these people he says they're going to make it so that people doing cryptocurrency projects are going to develop them and simply just put them on github or release them out into the world so that they are the same exact way that bitcoin was released so that nothing can be d declared a security so that nothing that is seen as a decentralized exchange uh they may have people who are creating them but no one will know exactly who the face of these things are anymore so that you know uh, uh pretty much what it comes down to is that the sec on their hunting mission uh they're just going to make everything a lot more uh private they're going to make sure that when people create their cryptocurrency products that there's there's a privacy layer that transactions can't be tracked that the people who are making these things cannot be tracked as well uh and it's just i don't know it's 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 very interesting how we've had about 13 14 months now and the sec has done relatively little when it comes to actually regulating the cryptocurrency space as far as you know telling us which coins are securities what uh if there's going to be specialized rules for things that uh, fall under the securities category, as these are, this is brand new technology. This this can't possibly fall under a 75 year old law, and this also ties into what I was saying a couple of months ago as well. Uh, and I've said this a couple of times. I'm, I hope some people have been listening, and I didn't mean to say it as like a a doom and gloom scenario, but I'm pretty sure you understand exactly what's happening right now. Uh, or rather you, you're seeing the, the, the beginnings of it. I said that the cryptocurrency market, and I've believed this for quite some time, I don't think at the moment, at this very moment, that we need over 2,000 coins. I think in about five, 10 years from now, when the use cases are there, I could definitely see a use for anywhere from two to 5,000 coins. I can definitely see it if we find the use cases for them. As of now, I, I firmly believe 
we maybe need maybe around 150 to 200 coins, depending on the amount of large projects that we have out there who actually have partnerships, who are actually doing different things, who are not just boasting that their coin is quicker, stronger, faster, has more smart contracts. That's completely irrelevant. Uh, what's going to happen is that a lot of these projects are being shut down right now. And I said before that the market is going to collapse backwards. And this is exactly what's going to start happening. As all, as the SEC, for the, 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 there was another article. I don't have it in here. The SEC has I've gone over, I think they've, found like over 50 to 100 different ICOs who they have currently sent letters to or they have, are trying to shut down and stuff like that who are being fined. And a lot of these people are completely just stopping their entire projects. So what we're going to see from the back end is a lot of these projects completely disappear and the money that was in these things that is now going to be refunded to all the people who are investing inside of it, they're going to put their money into some of the strongest cryptocurrencies uh, and not even to... Uh, boast about these coins or try to raise their price. I have no idea what people are saying nowadays. Every time I, every time I make something, depending on which coin that I'm talking about, people think I'm trying to boost up its price or I'm holding a big bag or something. It's, 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 it's no, none of that. I'm trying to give you like sound advice to help you in the long run. Like, I don't know why people think that the advice that I give them is me trying to get them to buy certain coins. It's just completely ridiculous sometimes. Um, when you look at the patterns that are happening right now in the cryptocurrency space and the coins that I firmly believe, my me, myself, I, that are going to be around at least for the next two years, it's going to be my, my opinion. It's going to be Bitcoin. It's going to be Ethereum. It's going to be XRP. Litecoin is going to be there in some capacity. It's going to be EOS, potentially Omize Go. I am not too certain on BAT neither is zero X. And I don't mean that to be pessimistic. I mean, realistically, as far as like, uh, when major corporations are talking about getting into the cryptocurrency sphere and they're talking about how their funds are denominated and, and you know, the coins that they're looking at, it's always the top 10. And sometimes it's even like the top seven, top eight. Uh, and it's typically Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash, because it has the name Ethereum, maybe Ethereum classic XRP, Litecoin, and some of them are trying to add Stellar, and they're trying to add a couple other coins. The point is, uh, the SEC is cracking down. Uh, we now have a thing where these people who made ICOs that I tried to not warn people against towards the beginning of the year, but I told people, pay attention to them because they're probably not real, uh, or whatever the case might be. They're now telling people they're being people are being refunded their funds. And when people, when we have another bull market or when people uh, get sick of the fact that they're not making any money, they're going to focus on certain coins. And I, and I think next year and a half, two years, we're going to have a substantially lower number of cryptocurrencies that are going to make it. There was something that I heard, uh, it, had, it had to be a couple of months ago right now. And this guy he was a hedge fund manager or something like that. And he was talking about how he uh, left Wall Street to get into cryptocurrencies. And they were asking him, well, like, which coins do you think are going to make it in the long run? And he said... Um, when the next bull market happens and it lasts, uh, for the next 12 to 18 months, people were asking where I got those numbers from. People thought I pulled it out of my backside. No, this is a number that's been quoted for quite some time. If you, if you Google like crypto bull run 12 to 18, I'm pretty sure you'll find articles about it. People think that the next bull run is going to be very substantial and that it's going to go on for quite some time until Bitcoin hits around a quarter of a million dollars and then starts to slowly sink back down because people will once again say that Bitcoin is overvalued until it goes back down and starts to go back up. He said what people, what he said, what you have to pay attention for right now, the coins that he is, is him himself sure that are going to make it are the uh, coins that solidify themselves in the top 10. These are going to be the the blue chip stocks, if you will, that all the investors are going to try and go for because it, realistically, when someone's putting millions, potentially hundreds of millions of dollars into the cryptocurrency space, they're not going to want to focus on number 174. I have no idea what, what coin that is. No one's going to want to focus on number 38, number 72. People want uh, the 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 vain side of it as well. You know, you you brag about having uh, Apple stock and you brag about having Amazon stock or you brag about having Facebook stock. You don't brag about the company that is making acorns down the street or the one uh, that made your shoelaces, uh, just to kind of put it out there. I didn't mean to spend that much time on this, uh, but the SEC has been ramping up vigorously the last couple of weeks uh, as to who they're prosecuting, persecuting, following, going around, shutting down ICOs. Uh, so just please, as always, pay attention to where you put your money. Make sure, as always, to do your own research because... This is this is accelerating a lot quicker than I thought it was, and the SEC is a, has they have a clearly have a bone to pick uh, with people who are uh, launching ICOs and who have not registered with them, which they pretty much take offense to. Let's move on.
Next up. As Venezuela is in the grip of hyperinflation, a local, a large local Walmart-like department store has started to accept Bitcoin for goods. More and more are cryptocurrencies establishing themselves as a viable alternative to Venezuela's redenominated local currency of the Bolivar, Traki, or Traki, T-R-A-K-I. A large department store has purportedly started to accept cryptocurrencies. Here is a photo of it. Looks pretty large, like four or five floors. There's a car. According to a Reddit thread posted by user I'm Vito, she was able to purchase 884 items of school supplies and clothing with as little as $260 in Bitcoin. Supposedly, the money was donated by the Reddit community and all items will be going towards the country's kids in need. Real adoption and real help, reads the thread. As the user has also shared the transaction of purchase, apart from Bitcoin, the department store also accepts Dash, Ethereum, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. Dash is, uh, for those who've been listening the last couple of months, Dash should be no surprise at all. I know it sounds a bit weird, especially when we're used to hearing just Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Dash is uh, very popular in Venezuela right now. And there was a guy on YouTube who's taking videos of him, like going to different stores and stuff like that to show all the different places where you can actually buy food, pampers, clothing items and stuff like that all in Dash. It's actually quite interesting. Here, I guess, is the actual, oh, here, yeah, is the thing where they say that they're actually accepting it at, at Traki or Traki, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, the country has undoubtedly failed to maintain its control over its financial sovereignty. With fiat as the International Monetary Fund projects that the local inflation rate will hit 1 million percent by the end of 2018. It already went over there. It was, it was, it was the, the, the inflation rate was currently, I think, 1.5 million percent or something like that. Pressure, however, is only boiling up as the country recently instigated mandatory petrol payments for pa uh, travel passports. Uh, I, I skipped over this as well a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the president of Venezuela has mandated, first of all, he created his own cryptocurrency that is supposed to be backed by uh, petrol reserves. That is like gasoline for other people. Uh, and the fact is that he apparently mandated, I'm not in Venezuela, I, I just I re I read the news and I find out information. He's mandated that if you want to leave the country to get a passport, you have to pay in his new cryptocurrency. Uh, it's kind of a mm, crap show. That's the easiest way to kind of say it. Uh, for a long time, people thought that Bitcoin would take hold in countries that would be marred by hyperinflation. And lo and behold, this is happening a lot quicker than I'm even sure a lot of Bitcoin maximalists even uh, considered. Uh, the, you, you have to understand the significance of a situation like this where there's, there's a currency that was made nine years ago in possibly a basement that only a couple of people were using. I, I think about 15 people were using it for the first couple of months in, in Bitcoin's history. That is now being used by multiple people around the world who are being inf in, in, infected, uh, uh, affected by hyperinflation, you have to you have to see how insane all of this is. That the entire purpose of Bitcoin and, and other cryptocurrencies in 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 the entire in their entirety, what have you, uh, were to be used as a method of payment should your country begin to collapse. And since we've seen it's Venezuela, it's Argentina, it's many African countries, it's even one or two uh, countries that are attached to Europe. I'm not going to name any names. Uh, the fact that people are starting to buy and use cryptocurrencies and use bitcoin as a method of payment i i i feel like th th there's a certain way for me to say it in my head but i can't really articulate it out loud when i'm trying to talk to everyone i can see it cl very clear in in my mind uh i don't think people understand how insane this is can you imagine if you created something nine years ago uh, imagine you're sitting at home you created something in order to help people and now it's helping millions of people around the world and in, in in multiple countries to be able to buy school supplies to be able to feed their family imagine if you had uh you know caught the train early in 2017 and you were in one of these countries and you had maybe put 50 to 100 dollars in in xrp or in ethereum or even in bitcoin and how much money like you would have and how much how much further this would go it's, it's all very in insane to me uh that we've come so far so quick and we still have estimates of bitcoin potentially hitting you know 30,000 80,000 250,000 in the next couple of years like it, it feels like it feels like there's a revolution happening right before our eyes. Like the thing that many people have wanted for quite some time, the for Bitcoin or rather just to have financial independence or to get away from the the previous financial system or some or to have something better. And I feel like so many people are just focusing on 
the, the prices of cryptocurrencies and not how much is actually changing the world. This was made nine years ago. And there are people around the world using it now almost on a daily basis to be able to live. It's incredibly weird. Like a, someone else out there has to feel how I'm feeling. I don't mean to ramble too much on this, but um, yeah, I uh, the, the, the situation in Venezuela is absolutely horrific. Uh, I don't know how easy it is for, I know, first of all, in many Western countries, i.e., let's say the States and even like in Europe, it's, it's even now there's a lot of friction when it comes to being able to put your money into cryptocurrencies or to be able to get cryptocurrency. So I can only imagine in many other countries, it's a bit more difficult. Uh, I wonder, uh, I don't know. I, I, I wish more people were getting into cryptocurrencies who actually needed it. Uh, it's one thing for, you know, some of the richest people in the entire world to get into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and to increase their wealth. And potentially one day we have the first trillionaire in the world because of cryptocurrencies. But it's another thing for hundreds of millions of people around the world uh, who are either living in poverty or who are experiencing 1.5 million percent hyperinflation to actually use cryptocurrencies on a daily basis. Like imagine if 15 to 20 percent of the people in Venezuela uh, got together, figured out how to, or rather like made some type of a thing where they could, uh, you know, start using cryptocurrencies on a daily basis, like how much different their lives would be. Like Bitcoin isn't, isn't, uh, inflating by 100,000% every month. I, I don't know. I'm going to, uh, move on from this. I, I think it's incredibly fascinating. I think a lot of people are losing sight of how quickly this is all happening. The fact that someone created this nine years ago and it's changing the entire world, I think is usually, or rather has been lost for the last two years uh, just because people are focusing on how much money they can make and not that, uh, in about 10 years, let's say even 15 years, this is probably going to be, our kids are only going to be using cryptocurrencies and we will have been, you know, these are the stories that we're going to tell them. We saw the very beginning of this happening. We saw the hyperinflation. We saw the, the, the conflicts breaking out around the world. And it was potentially in this, you know, u utopian future, it was Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies that ended up saving us. It's, it's all very, very odd to me. Next up. Yeah, this is this ties right into it. That's crazy. Um, in the words of the CEO of Bitcoin investment firm Pantera Capital, his name is Dan Moorhead. Disruptive technologies usually earn a title like category killers. But in the case of Bitcoin, it is a serial killer. According to Moorhead, this is because it will disrupt dozens of sectors with the cryptocurrency already having demonstrated the capacity to potentially turn the tables in, sub, in some subsectors in the financial industry. He said it's great at car, cost border. It's great at cross border money movement. It's great at storing your wealth, especially if you live in a country with depreciating currencies or capital controls. He said this in an interview with Bloomberg. Per Moorhead, Bitcoin's best days lie ahead as it will only be possible to use it for making everyday transactions such as coffee purchases over the next decades. Additionally, Moorhead noted that while the popularization of the internet decades ago disrupted various sectors, the financial sector was largely left untouched. Bitcoin will, however, allow users to render banks, credit cards, and remittance services completely obsolete by enabling peer-to-peer -peer transactions. During the interview, Moorhead admitted that one of the problems hindering the adoption of Bitcoin was lack of user friendliness with regards to acquiring the cryptocurrency from exchanges, but these challenges were gradually being, being, being overcome, my goodness. Right now, the exchanges are a bit clunky. They're a little expensive, but the fees are coming down pretty quickly. Patera Capital's boss also observed that one of the biggest challenges currently facing Bitcoin is scalability. As the number of transactions per second is limited to single digits, Moorhead, however, expressed optimism that this would be solved, he said. So the next couple of years are all about the scaling these blockchains so that they are able to handle tens of thousands of transactions per second or even hundreds of thousands of transactions. In Moorhead's view, the biggest indication or indicator of Bitcoin staying power is the high number of individuals using it. Uh, as this has now increased by more than tenfold, he said six or eight years ago, there were probably a million people on earth using it. Now there are 50 million people using it. I think in a decade is going to be billions of people using it. And I, and I actually believe him, uh, for a very long time. And it's not even just a uh, Bitcoin that I'm putting into this category. I mean, in general, I, I was, I, I wasn't a skeptic when I got into cryptocurrencies, you know, you think, Wow, this sounds great. This sounds amazing. But we've had other movements and stuff like this before. And you uh, you get your hopes up kind of and you see that these uh, 
I don't want to say like libertarian views, but these things where I guess people have liberty and, you know, financial control over their own assets. Uh, you get these movements, you see things happening, and you think that one day you will have some type of a system like this, things fall apart. So when I got into cryptocurrencies, you know, you think, well, this sounds cool. Uh, let's see if it kind of goes anywhere. But the way that crypto has been spreading and the, the, the influence and the, the fact that multiple people around the world know the name Bitcoin are using it. There are all these surveys that have been done as well that I don't have a lot of them in and we're like none of them in, in the videos where people are going to like Ireland and, you know, they're going to France and Germany and they're going to like Colorado and stuff like that in Canada. And they're questioning a large number of people and they're asking them how many, you know, people are actually using or have cryptocurrencies. And sometimes it's around like 15 to 20 percent of an entire or rather the, you know, for the survey, 20 uh, percent of people actually end up owning cryptocurrencies and usually they ask people you know if you don't own it do you plan on buying some in, in the near future and they're like yeah i'm trying to figure out a way to do it this is why uh, i said that there's there's still a lot of friction when it comes to being able to buy cryptocurrencies i am hopeful i i don't know i think cryptocurrency exchanges are always at least for now going to have some type of a like a really weird system we need to be able to get away from How do I say this? I think this is why I am very much for XRP because it helps payments move a lot quicker through systems. I, I think it's still a little weird that it takes three to five days to be able to process a normal payment. Like if you're trying to buy cryptocurrency, like like especially with like when the prices are down, this has happened to everybody. When the prices of cryptocurrencies are down, and you're trying to buy cryptocurrencies at that very moment. You put your money into the system. You try to buy it somewhere. And it says it's going to, you know, three to five business days for it to get there. And by the time you actually have your money into cryptocurrencies, uh, it's a completely different price. The other coins that you wanted to buy are now at a different price as well. They've either gone up or whatever the case might be. Uh, this is why I'm kind of all for uh, Bitcoin or crypto ATMs, kind of like as a another instantaneous-ish way to be able to put your money into the cryptocurrency market. The point is... Um, I, for a, a while, thought maybe this was going to be like a, a very strong niche. I think I, I thought crypto was going to, you know, go very far, uh, but not the way that it's kind of going right now. It's estimated that a, anywhere from 50 million to, I think, 100 million people on Earth um, either use cryptocurrencies, have cryptocurrencies, uh, trading cryptocurrencies, or are uh, in the process of thinking about buying some relatively soon. Uh, I could definitely see billions of people <laughs> using uh cryptocurrencies uh especially bitcoin i don't know like i um hmm. it's not that i'm afraid of saying certain things but i don't want to make it seem like i am i i try to remain as unbiased as possible when i make these videos uh but my brain tells me that certain things are going to excel a lot further than others and without naming any other coins i'll just realistically give like the top three I'm almost certain at this point, this is probably, at least in my opinion, how a large part of the world is going to function. I'm pretty sure Bitcoin is going to make it and may even be the the thing that we use to go get coffee, the thing that we go to buy a new sweater. I'm almost certain that Ethereum is going to be the platform on which other things are, are built and made. And this is what governments are probably going to use as well to be able to uh, run their systems. And I'm almost certain that XRP is going to be what we use uh, when we go to the bank and when we're trying to transfer money around the world in, an, in like another way, if that kind of makes a lot of sense uh, w without naming any other coins, I'm fairly certain. Uh, I don't even think in a decade. I think once the market picks up, the, the, the FOMO is going to commence. And I think when we have the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ and Fidelity and everybody else officially get into the game and they finally have their own cryptocurrency exchanges, we're going to start seeing ads and pay attention to this as well. We're going to start seeing ads everywhere for people to, you know, like like, like when you go to the bank and they're like, they have that, ha that, that, that happy family smiling in the corner and they're like, you can take out money here and you can be happy as well. I think we're going to start seeing stuff like that as well. Well, they're, uh, when their bags are full, the, you know, the richest people in the world of them telling normal people to start buying cryptocurrencies as well as a way to uh, capture their financial sovereignty or whatever you kind of want to call it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Didn't mean to spend too much time on this. And I dislike when I have to name specific coins out loud that I think that are going to make it because I don't want other people to phone onto the market. I don't want other people to uh, take my word as law like I haven't seen the future. I can't exactly say what's going to end up happening in the cryptocurrency space. But the way that things are um, settling right now, as in, you know, the dust was kicked up and you look at the ground to see where the dust is settling. Uh, there are certain coins that are clearly 
uh, in my opinion, going to make it. They have too much backing to not make it. That's at least uh, how I look at it right now. And I guess to kind of finish things off, the market is doing pretty well. It's kind of interesting for a weekend that the market is green at all. Bitcoin Cash is still going through the uh, the hard fork woes. There was also something else that I didn't include in this video. I can't remember who else it was. They were talking about that um they also planned on trying to attack Bitcoin Cash because they thought it wasn't the written. It's like just 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 stop all of it already. Uh, so the market's doing pretty okay. There was an article talking about which I thought was uh a little funny. Uh, XRP like I, I said before in the last video does very well when it comes to like a market recovery. Uh, people were noting and writing articles already about how XRP has uh, remained in the number two spot and how the market cap is slowly widening between it and Ethereum. And they also noted how uh, Stellar was also, you know, 5% up because it was, you know, so and so and so must have had good news. Uh, and a large, I'm, I don't not like Stellar, uh, but I feel like a lot of times Stellar is placed in the same exact category as XRP. And, and, and it's just not like in any way, shape, or form in the same league. Uh, I understand what Stellar's trying to do. I understand the IBM partnership. I've read into it. I made videos about it. I totally get it. Uh, but I think XRP at this point is in a, a, in a league entirely of its own. Just to kind of throw that out there. No other coin had any real significant news. I mean, it is the weekend, to be fair. I think Binance coin is up a tiny bit because we had, uh, we had news yesterday that there was... I can't remember what it was called. A lot of platforms are adding Binance coin as if it's like a normal coin. Like it's not from Binance. Like they're adding it. You know how like they have like the, the press releases. Like we added Tron and we added IOTA. Like they're now announcing that they added Binance coin. And it's a little it's a little weird. Uh, don't really know how I feel about that yet. It's just simply because it's, it's a coin that was made for an exchange. Like we don't have, well, there isn't really a Coinbase coin. Uh, but I want to see if people have that same exact enthusiasm if they end up adding Coinbase coin. Uh, looking around, yeah, no other coin has had really significant news. I think they're just kind of uh, moving up on the potential that Bitcoin could potentially move up. It's good to see that a lot of the new coins, at least that have been added uh, to Coinbase over the last week or two, are now once again in the green. They were not suffering, but like it was a bit of a sell-off <laughs> when it came to... Uh, like the hype around them like died off very, very quickly <coughs> simply because people were pretty much kind of pumping and dumping them when it came to them being added onto Coinbase. But yeah, I think that, that'll definitely do it. <coughs> My gosh, the air is dry here. Sorry. It's like minus two degrees and like it just, it's very, very cold, even with the heat on. Uh, air is very dry. Anyway, I think that's definitely going to do it for this video. Thank you once again all for watching and or listening. Hope you all have a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Should anything else uh, significant or crazy happen today, I will definitely, of course, make another video. But as it is the weekend, uh, the moment we... I have no idea what this is. No idea what's happening there. At the moment, the market's doing pretty okay. It's in green right now. Let's hope that it remains in green as we get to Monday. Thank you, one. Thank you, one. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. See you.